Hello back. Let's build one more section. This one is where the customers tell about their experience with OmniFood. And this is actually one of the sections I like the most. We will once again use beautiful food imagery to almost make the user feel hungry just by browsing our website. So here we have just three customers side by side in what they have to say. And this way of showing customer testimonials is actually pretty common. In this lecture, we will once again practice our skills. We'll learn how to create a beautiful effect with background images using just CSS and how to effectively communicate what customers have to say about our company. So here we are back in our HTML document. And you see here we already have way over 200 lines of code. Great, right? So as always another um, section here and this one is called section testimonials. Some space here and now starting with the title let me just as always get the text for this section. And here we go. So the title here will be Our Customers Can't Live Without Us. So div class and another row here. And in this row we will have nothing but the title, the h2 element, which we already are pretty used to by now. And now another row. And in this row is where we will have our customer opinions. Now, since we have three, three customers, we will of course include three columns here. So you already know how to do this. Span one of three, because we have three columns. And now HTML actually has an element designed precisely to include quotes into HTML documents. And what I'm talking about is the element block quote. And in this element we can just paste our text very well. And yet another HTML element is the site element. And the site element is obviously where we will put the name of the person who expressed this opinion. So inside of a block quote usually goes the text and then an, a site element where we will put the author of this text. Now beside this text we also have an image of this person and we can also include this into this site element. So the image is pretty easy to include here. Let's go to resources, image, and we have our customers down here. You see one, two, and three. So next I just have to change the, the number. So this is our first customer. And okay, I think that's the correct HTML for one of the columns. So let me just copy this as usual and paste it here so we can complete our row. So we have three nice columns. Now as always let me copy this text here. It's Joana Silva which comes probably from Portugal. And now this is image two. Right. And that's her. And the last one. Great. And this is Milton Chapman. And customer three. And here it is. 
get rid of the text and I think that should be our HTML code. We will not need more than this. So let's see what it looks like. So this was our previous section and here is our current section and what is happening here this looks pretty weird well what's what's going on here let's go back and okay here I see the problem it shouldn't be row of course not you probably saw this before I saw it so it should be call of course it's a column right so let's go back and now this looks just as it should right so this is the HTML code now it's correct and let's format it in CSS in the next lecture hello and welcome back to building the customer testimonial section this is getting easier and easier don't you think so so let's have some more fun with CSS. So this is where we left our website in the last lecture. And now let's start by adding a beautiful background image that is actually in the folder of our contents, in our project folder. So right here. So it will be a background image. So this image right now is here. It is called back customers but since it will be a background image it should be here inside our CSS folder so as you remember all our background images go right here into this folder okay so now we're ready to use that image so let's go back to our CSS file and let's create some space down here And you're already used to this by now. So let's start to define the code for this section. Section testimonials. So let's start by defining again a background image. Background image. And this is how we do it again and make customers all right so as before we want this image to fill the whole width of the browser so we say back ground size cover so this is probably what you will always want to do with your images so let's see the result of this all right, so this is way too bright and it's the same situation as we had before on our header section. So we will once again make this image darker. And I hope you remember how we did that. So it's like setting multiple backgrounds here. So we have a gradient with a black opaque color and then the customer images. So we create a linear gradient. So as before, I will start with complete black and then change it with a color picker. And command E. And let's set this to, let's say 80%. And here the same exact thing. So 80%. It is, this looks probably way better right now. Right. So now what we have to do is, of course, to make all the text inside of this white. And then, believe me, it will look great. So color and color white. And let's check it. Okay, this looks cool. Now I want to show you a very cool effect that you can achieve with background images in CSS. And I'm talking about this property. It is background 
attachment. And if we set this to fixed, then let me show you what this will look like. So it's like the image always stays in the same place and we scroll our website and the image stays always on the same place. So I think this is a cool effect and it's really easy to achieve. And in fact, we should do the same thing up here. Okay, so I will just copy this to the header CSS block just to see if it looks cool there as well. Okay, and this is the effect. So the image stays in the same place and we just scroll and I think this is really cool. And down here it will look even cooler once we add more sections below this. So the next step would be to define these block quotes elements right here. So this is very straightforward, of course. Just write our block quote selector. And the first thing is we maybe want some padding there because you saw that the boxes were very close to each other. Now we'll say 2%. And then it is um, quite usual to show the customer testimonials in an italic style. So in order to do that, I will say font style italic. So, and I can do this only because I already incorporated the italic style for my Google fonts here. Okay, so whenever you need uh, italics on your website, you need to include that web font. Now another thing is I want some line height here as always and I will again choose 145% here. Okay, much better, right? And now we can format the site element and the images that are inside of the site element as well. So this is again very easy. We can do this because we will only use the site and the black quote elements in this place. So we don't need to make any class for those. So in here I would say that the font size could be a little smaller, like 90% maybe. And let's add some margin to the top as well. Margin top of let's say 25 pixels and now for the image so it's the image inside of the site and by now you're already really familiar with all of that so the image I will say will have a height of 50 pixels and a border a border radius of 50 percent and yeah you already know as well that this makes any element um, round. And we want some margin to the right side as well. Let me say here 10 pixels. So we we'll made some changes here. So let me check it again. Okay. So what is going on here? We need a line break here. So here's the text and then the text just continues um, with the image and then the rest of the text. Now the best way to actually do this is to define this as a block element, right? So what we can do is to say that the site element should be a block element. And so once more we use the display property with block and this should do the job. Exactly. So this is what I hoped for. Now it's a block element and so it is aligned for itself. Now I want this text here to be aligned with this. And this is again very easy. We just say that we want some vertical align to the middle. 
and now it should look just as we want it. I think the images are a little too big, don't you think so? They take up too much space, I guess. Now what's also missing here is like a big quotation mark which we can put here. And I will show you a great way to do this and we will once again use the after zero class. No, in fact we will use the before because this time we want it to appear before our text. So let's quickly do this. And first of all, let me change this. I said it was too big, so maybe 45 will work better. And now let's define the before zero class. So site before. And we want it to be a quotation mark. So remember how do we put text on a website using just CSS? It is with content. The last time we used this, we didn't want to see any words, so we just leave an empty space. I will just, just to exemplify this, put an A and we will then put a quotation mark in a second. But for now, let me just show you how this looks and we'll also in order that we can see it, uh, change the font size here to 400%. All right, this is not what I wanted because I actually wanted it before the block quote, right? So it is block quote. And here we go. All right, now, in order to put the quotation mark there is not as easy as it may sound. Because in order to do that, we need to use them something called an ISO special character. So this here is a list that I will include into the course ebook and in here we can just choose uh, some sign that we want and then we will have to copy this very code here. So in order to make it easier for me I will just search for quotation mark and this is not the one that I want. It's this one right here. I want this. So I need to copy this this code right here. All right, and I will now paste it here. So let's check this. All right, here we go. Cool, right? Now we need to have this in a new line once again, so we have to make this as a block element. So let's do that. Display block very easy. Now in order to position this exactly where we want it, we need to define its um, top and left attributes because it is really the easiest way is to change this around using absolute positioning. So position absolute and then we can change its top, maybe, I don't know, five pixels, and the left to zero. All right. And before we can see how this looks, there's a very important thing that we have to do. And it's this. When we make a element with absolute position, we have to ensure that its parent has uh, an relative position. So in this case we will have to say that this here is relative and if we didn't do this this wouldn't appear where we want it. And here we go. Okay this is way too close to the text so let it put back to zero maybe but we can put the left to 
minus 3, for instance. Let me see this. Yeah, this looks cool. Maybe what I should do is to give it some space between this line here and those block quotes. So in order to have more space for this one here, this quotation mark, and I should probably also do this a little bigger. So I'll increase this to 500% actually. And then I will say that we want some margin to the top of this of 40 pixels. And this can actually be also, um, let's say, minus 5 pixels. And here minus 5 pixels as well, wouldn't hurt. And this is what it looks like now. So now we have one more section designed. And I really like what we achieved here in this section. This background image is really cool. And also this effect that we added to this section and to this one. It's really cool. We're starting to get a really good looking website. So next up we have the section with some pricing plans where we will use some new stuff. So don't wait and see you there. Welcome to yet another lecture on our killer website project. Now it's time to build the sign up section. So in this section we have three pricing plans side by side. And each of these plans has three parts. The price, the description and a sign up button. We want the user to choose the first plan because it's the most profitable for the company. So it appears as the first plan and also with the full call to action button. So the new things we'll learn in this lecture are how to design with CSS border radius and how to create box shadows. All the other things we'll do in this lecture use concepts that you're already familiar with, which is pretty cool. So here we are back in our HTML file, which already has more than 250 lines of code. This is quite impressive. So yet another section here, which I'll call section plans. Okay. And I will add a new row here in which I will add the h2 title, such as in many of the other sections. So let me get the text for this section in our document and here it is. And paste it down here. So the title here is Start Eating Healthy Today. It's actually right here. All right, so I'm speeding things up a little bit because by now you're already familiar with most of this stuff. So as you saw in the sketch that I showed you before, we have three columns here where each column is a pricing plan. So call and span one of three. Now the question is, how are we going to organize our code inside of each of these boxes? Well, I will now actually create another div inside of this column and you will later understand why I'm doing this. I will call this one plan box, but it has a pretty good reason actually. And as I said, I will explain you later the importance of doing it this way. So as I said, each of these um, pricing plans will have three sections. So I create three divs here. The first one is for the price, then another one for the details, and yet another one for the sign up button. So let me check the text here. So the first one is the premium. So let's copy this and let's reuse our H3 title. So this one is the premium. 
and now we need to put the price of $399 here. So I will make a paragraph with this and call this paragraph um, plan price. And in this case, we have to attribute a class name to this paragraph because we will have multiple paragraphs. And then with a class name, it's the easiest uh, way to select those paragraphs later for the CSS code. So $399 per month and then the other text we have down there. And this one will be plan price month for this text. So that's the price per month. Actually it's the price per meal so let's change this to meal. Okay, nice. Now we have some details here and as before I will use an unordered list in order to show these details. And now a list element. I think we should use an icon here like a check mark and you already know where to find them. We will again use our icon font here and let's find here in our iOS inspired icons a check mark and it's easy to find actually. So I will take this code and create an icon here. So a check mark and then the text that we want here. So on meal every day. And I will actually just duplicate this with command D. So order 24 seven. Patients. And free delivery. Okay, great. So this is the HTML for the second section of this pricing plan. And now the last one. And this one should be pretty easy because it's just a sign up button. And we already had that before. So href again points to nowhere. And then our class is the button class we used before. And we want a full button for this pricing plan. And the text that should go here is sign up. Simple as that. Sign up now. Okay, great. So I think this is um, a good HTML structure. So let's copy this and paste it here two more times for the other two. This is pro and it's 149 per month. So the pro is 149 per month. And that's only 1490 per month per meal. Per meal. All right. And one meal for ten days. Or twenty four seven is the same, and the rest is all the same. So now here, starter, and we have nineteen per meal. So this is a little different. I will put it right this. And we actually don't have this paragraph here because it's the price per meal is already 19. So let's delete this. Or actually not delete it. We'll just leave it empty. And now right here it's just one meal 
order from 8 to 12 free delivery is here and this one will be empty and since it's empty it shouldn't have a check mark but we can put like a cross there like this here this will be better alright so this is our text and uh, one more thing to change here because we had a um, full button for the first pricing plan but here we want a ghost button I hope you remember those we had them in the first uh, section so let's check this out and here it is okay so as you would expect this is not yet formatted the only formatted things are the buttons because we already did that before such as the h3 element and the title as always so in the next lecture it's then time to format the whole thing i'm waiting for you there Hi, let's continue working on the sign up section. Let's write some more CSS code. So, back here. Let's start with the background color and I will show you why. So the first section we had was white, completely white. Then the se second one had these uh, very subtle gray background color. Then the next one was white again. So now, as you can guess, it's again time for a gray one. So that will be the first thing to do. And then, of course, starting to build a structure for each of these uh, pricing plan columns. So give here some white space and starting to make this look better. So let's do that. So this section is called section plans. I'll put some white space here so we can see what's going on. Okay. So the first thing here is a background color. And I don't remember so I will just copy this one. Okay. Now let me check our HTML code. So I'll start to format the plan box here. All right. So, let's make this plan box white so that it looks uh, different than the background color of the, of the rest of the section. And I will say FFF. Okay, and I also want to give this some rounded corners. So, for the radius of let's say five pixels here and now I don't want it to be 100% of the parent width so I will say with 90% and then I will use the same technique as we used before to center it inside of its parent just to show you again the parent of this one is the call box. So margin left 5%, which is half of the remaining 10% uh, from 19 to 100. And now let me see this. Okay, so this has already these rounded corners. And 
it's white. Now let's divide this into the three sections. Okay, but first let me explain you why I put this box into the column. Such as I promised you, I would explain you. So this situation here, why I created this div inside of the column. Because if I hadn't, I wouldn't be able to make the plan box as wide as I wanted it, only 90% with the white background color. It would not have been possible to, to do this by just formatting this column or adding some box here. So this was the solution that I had to use. Great, so now let's section each of those subsections. And in order to do that, I will do it like this. Because, as we defined it, we have three divs. This one, this one, and this one. So I want them to have a padding of 15 pixels each, let's say. And what's also important is to make a little separation between them. We will have some border at the bottom of each of them. So a nice a little border with a very light color, a very subtle gray. So only one pixel and a solid color. And let's again start with white and then use the color picker to adjust the color. So a very subtle color here, which we almost won't notice. So for example, this one, we will then check it. But for now we can just uh, format some other things as well. Let me see what we got here. For example, this. Let's start at the beginning. Now the H3 is already defined, so let's continue with the plan price. And a plan price, I want it to be like really big. So font size, for instance, 300%. and maybe a margin to the bottom to that paragraph of 10 pixels. And the next paragraph is plan price meal, if you remember. I don't know yet what to put here, so let's just look at our website. Okay. Not bad, right? But this looks a little bit overwhelming here and such as I told you when you choose to use very big font sizes the best thing to do is to actually reduce the font white which is what we're gonna do and also we will reduce this text so we only want this to be this big and there's actually an easy way to do this uh, also I think this text is a little too big here, so let's make those changes. So first thing I will just decrease this here to let's say 80%, then we should totally decrease the font weight here to 100, and let me show you this. So these are the options we have which we included in the beginning, 100, 300, 400, and 300 italic. So I will use this font weight, which is the lowest that we have available. And now we want to uh, style this per month text in a different way. And I will now t show you another HTML element for doing that, which is, where is it? Which is this one. This is called span. And span has only one purpose, basically. Uh, its purpose is to just appear inside a paragraph, for example, and style some text in a different way than the rest, which is exactly what we want here. 
So the same thing goes for this here and down here. There's a difference that it's per meal here. So we can now go ahead and um, format this in a different way. So we can say plan price and then the span inside of it can have a different font size. Now the thing is that this span here is a child of this plan price which has a font size of 300%. Now if we would say font size equals 100%, then this 100% would not be the base size of 20 pixels, but this 300% because it is the parent uh, font size. So if we want a smaller font size, we have to choose a very small number, like for instance 30%. So we have 30% of these uh, 300 and not of the initial 20 pixels. Okay, and another thing is that we want the font weight back to 300 here because once again this is a parent element and it says font weight is an 100 and so this element will inherit that value and so in order to put it back to 300 we have to specifically say, yeah, we want it to be 300. Okay, another thing we can do here is to make this orange to stand out even more, this plan price. Okay. As you remember, color should be used to uh, draw attention to important elements. And I think the price is pretty important here. So I will make it orange and it will stand out this way. All right, so I think this first part here already looks quite nice, isn't it? So next, let's take care of these lists here. So we just say plan box UL. And we want, of course, um, no list style. And now let's add some white space between those um, list elements. So this is pretty straightforward as well. So for instance, we can say we want a five pixel padding at the top and at the bottom of each of those elements and none on the sides. All right, now as for the icons, one thing that I should have done right from the beginning is to say that these are small icons with this class that we defined before. I hope you remember that. Since I forgot it, I'll do this right now. So all of these are small icons. And let's check that out. All right, this looks nice actually. So now let's center these one. And I also notice one strange thing, which is since we don't have this paragraph here, we left it empty, uh, this line completely disappeared. So what we have to do is to put a space there. All right, so I will do that. And where is it? Here is the space. And in fact, adding just a simple space, just like this, will not do anything. We have to use a special character, uh, such as I told you before. There are those special HTML special characters. And for a space, it's ampersand and B S P. So you can find all of these in the course ebook. And hopefully, this will solve that problem. Check this. Yeah, it does. So it's now 
like an empty line. And now let's center this button. Should be pretty easy. Uh, maybe a good way to doing that is to select, is to simply select the last plan box and then center it, its content. So we already learned that as well. So plan box and then the div and then simply select the last child. And we say text align center. Pretty easy. And that's it. Now you don't see those borders here because the box is selected. Let me deselect it. Now you notice maybe you don't see it, but here is a gray line and that's obvious because we define it that way. We said that all those three divs should have these lines, but of course the last one shouldn't. And so we will uh, take that away. Another thing that we should do here, I think, is to maybe highlight this box here with a little um, gray background. Something between this darker gray and this white here. So let's do those two things. So first thing, we want no border at all. So border none here in the last child. And the first child should have a nice background color. The secret here is to be very subtle. We want to make a difference, but a difference that doesn't pop out so much. We want to be subtle because that's a great way of doing beautiful design. So just say background color again starting like this and let's choose a great uh, background color. Okay, this, this should be good. Okay. It's, it's actually hard to see, but it makes a difference, believe me. <laughs> so now these rounded bottoms are gone. You probably don't see it because the video may be too small, but these um, rounded borders are, are really gone. And I'm going to fix that in a moment. And now I want to show you another CSS property which is box shadow and we can add a nice effect here once again a very subtle box shadow just so that I can show you how this works because the box shadow uh, is a very much used CSS property so I think it's important that you learn this as well so fixing those uh, border radius I can say border top left radius should have also those five pixels and border top right five pixels and now let's add a nice box shadow to the entire box and we will do this right here so it's box shadow and now the first value here here is for the x axis offset and we don't want any of that then the second one is for the y axis offset and I will say two pixels here and now the blur I also want two pixels and the last value is the color and I will want a very subtle gray here again which is not so visible I don't know, something like this maybe. So let's see. No, this was too dark. This was already too dark. So once again, this is designing in the browser. We'll change the color until it looks good. All right. You will not see this in this video because it's really subtle. But in your browser, you will notice it, I'm sure. All right, so we have one more section completed. 
our website is almost done here. So we only have one more section and then the footer. This is great. So take a break now to digest all the things you learned so far or come with me right to the next section where we'll build our simple HTML form. Welcome back. Let's build a simple contact form in this lecture. To be honest, this section was not so much about making things beautiful and functional, but more to show you everything you need to know about forms, so that you can build even bigger and more complex forms in the future. So this is a simple contact form, as you can find it in numerous websites out there. And in this lecture, you learn a lot of new things. You learn how to build a useful form using new HTML elements such as form, label, input, select, option and text area. Then you will learn how to use CSS to format those different elements. So let's do this. So back in our brackets app we'll create yet another section. This one called section form. And once again we create a row here where we will put our title. So let's get the text for this section. That's not a lot this time. So the title is this one. And now let's create our form and we will do that in a row. So div, class and row again. Now a form is like a group of input elements and we have an HTML element where we need to put all of them and this element is called the form element and it needs to have uh, a couple of attributes. One is the method. You will choose post here. But this is not relevant for us in this case because this is only needed when we send this form and that requires a lot of programming and other languages and we will not talk about this in this course. So in this course we will only format this form but we will not be able to send anything from it. So another attribute that we need to define is the action which is like a link. So it is empty in this case and the action could be the script which handles how the how the form will be sent which again we will not talk about in this specific course. And then also a class I will call this contact form All right, now we can fill this form with our elements. And we will put a couple of rows in here. And in each of those rows, we will then have our different input elements. So we will have one column for the label, for example, name, email address, or something like that. And then one column for the input element. So it is a column and now it's something uh, a little special because we want one column to be bigger than the other one. And so I will say that I want the first column to be a span one of three such as we used a lot of times before. And then the second column will be span 2 of 3. So these two columns together make the whole row. So 1 plus 2 makes the 3. And this means that this column will be twice as wide as this column here. And I will actually show you 
how this works. So the 103 has a width of 32 percent approximately and the span 2 of 3 will have 63 percent approximately. All right. So as I said in the first column we want the label and we have an HTML element for that which goes like this. It just label and then let me see it is name. The first one is name. And that's it for now. And now we want a little text box. And in order to do that we use the input element and the type of this will be text. So you know, can see in this list here there are lots of different input types and we will use some of them but for now I will just use the text element. And now in each of those we should also give those a name because that name will later be used to send that form. Let's call it name because that's what it is here, right? And now I will also define an ID here which is also name. And another interesting thing we can do here is placeholder and the placeholder is the text that appears inside of the text field before we write anything inside of it. So here I will say for example your name. And the last thing here we just can add this keyword required and if we do so um, the browser will not allow us to send a form without completing this field. So this is a very handy. We can just write required and then Google Chrome or whatever browser will handle that for us. Okay, I will just show you how this looks like by now. Nothing special, of course, but here it goes. So this is a placeholder and this is the first column and this is the second column. As you see it's much wider. The text field is not as wide as the column yet but we will change that once we come to the CSS part of this lecture. So for now let's continue and I will keep on adding some rows here. So the next one is for the email. So I will change it here and we can actually also change the type here to email because that one that's one of the possible HTML uh, input types and so the browser will recognize that you need to write an email inside of, of the field. We'll also call this email and here your email. And this field is also required and can also only be sent if a valid email address was written inside of that field. Okay, so yet another line is what do we have here? How did you find us? So here we can put a little drop down box. We will not use this. So drop down box is just a, a couple of options where you can choose one from. And in order to do that we use the select element it will call us uh, find us and also with the ID find us. And I will tell you in a moment why we need this ID here. So don't worry. And now each of the options that we want here needs to be defined using the option element. And we need to specify a value. I will do that in a moment. And then the text we want to see. So in the first one I want to say, so how did you find us? Let's say friends. And the value can here be friends. And again, 
this value here serves then for the script that will handle the form once the form is sent which again we will not be able to do in this course so next what can we put here um, for instance search engine so search or maybe maybe it was an ad advertisement and just to complete this we can say we found it in some other way all right so how does it look like so we have the options we put there inside of this little list so this is starting to look great right and we can also do another thing here we can choose one of these and say select it I will choose this one this will be the first one that will be selected you see search engine all right I don't want this here let's put it here now the next thing is to ask us if we want a newsletter so again we want a row with the label newsletter now we'll now show you another input type and this one is checkbox so checkbox is just what the name says it's a box where you can choose yes I want it or no I don't want it and the name here will be newsletter or just news and the ID also news placeholder there's of course of course none of it and here I can say that I want this checkbox to be checked from the beginning so the default will be that it is checked and then some text here for instance yes please so it's already selected and then we have our text there so just a simple checkbox and now the last thing is drop us a line so that means that this is a field where we can write some email some message and in order to do that we want a bigger uh, text box copy this here so we will use something different because we want a big text area and that's, that's exactly the name of the HTML element and this also needs some attributes so I will call this name message and it can also have a placeholder like your message okay and then the last thing each uh, form should of course have is a submit button so we don't want anything in here because we want the button to be aligned with the fields of this form and such as I did in the section before I will use the NBSP special character so that we have a invisible space there and the the button is also an inbox element and it's called submit and doesn't need any of this but it has the value attribute where we will put the text we want to see on the button and in this place just say send it we don't need these so save this and let's see so this is a bigger text field and we can actually resize this in Google Chrome 
and then a button and as you see this field since I didn't fill it out Google Chrome tells me please fill out this field and if I do it will now say fill this out and now since I said this would be an email field Google Chrome knows that I should include the special symbol here in the email address so one last thing is as I promised you I would explain you why I included these name IDs here and that's for a simple reason because here in the label we can use the for attribute and then put the name of the ID here so we kind of link the label with the input and this is what, hap what happens so now we can click this and then the field gets selected cool right do this for the other ones as well for email and this actually only works with text uh, forms and also with this select element so this one is find us but it doesn't work with the checkbox and neither with the with the text area so I will just leave it like this and now if I click here this gets selected okay I think for the HTML part that's it and so in the next lecture we will just format this to make it look great such as we always do all right so see you there So let's use CSS to style or contact form. So back here I noticed two things. First, that these elements here don't fill 100% of their column. And the other thing is that we clearly don't need uh, all the entire width of the parent element of this row here. Because there is way too much space here between the labels and the elements and this doesn't look good so let's fix that so back in our uh, HTML file this will be the form and the class that we want to format the contact form so add a new class and some white space as always so we need this as well All right, so let's say we want a width of only 60%. This should be much better. And then we also want to center that thing. And we could use that technique where we say that we want the left margin to be 20%, which is half of the dif difference between 100 and 60. But in this case, I want to format it the other way that I showed you before which is saying that the margin top and bottom should be zero and auto on left and right margin so this will center this contact form inside of its parent element and now I want to format my other form elements so input and the other one was the select element and the text area and the first thing, I want them to be 100% wide so that they fill their whole column. And I also want them a little bit bigger by adding some padding inside of them. Let's say 7 pixels. This is a number that I like to use. And also a little border radius of, let's say, 3 pixels. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, now we have some strange border here. And we also have another thing that we don't want, which is this input element and this one also fill the whole content, 
but in fact we only want these two. So how do we achieve that? Let me go back and let me show it to you. So the ones that we want are the one with type text and type email, right? So I will show you a new selector in CSS now, which does the following. With them we can select all input elements which has the type text. So we say type should equal text. And then we can say the same thing with email. And all right, it works. So the button is back to normal and this check button as well. And now we got to get rid of this weird border here. And that should be quite easy. Just say border one pixel as always and solid and some gray color. So the color picker here and let's say it shouldn't be too dark. As always we want something very subtle here. I think this one is good. CCC. That's also a gray color that I like to use um, a lot. All right, let's see. Okay, great. You see that this select element here doesn't have the width of these two um, elements. And in fact, it's very difficult to style these select elements. And so we'll leave it just as it is. Now we want this text area to be a little bigger and we want this send button here to look like the other buttons. I mean like this button, like the full button. So let's go back. So I'll just say text area and a height of 100 pixels. And now for the button we do a very simple thing now. So we go back to the original buttons that we defined. Oh, here they are. And since we want to look them exactly the same as these buttons, we can just add a line here and then they will be styled the same way. And that button down there is an input with type submit, right? Do you remember? So we just have to do this. Now let's copy this because we also want to have it here. So now it will look exactly like this full button. So here of course it is an equal, not an underscore. And then we also of course want this hover effect here. So let's paste it here as well. Change that to equal. And let's check this now. All right, this looks good. And now we have to make this hover effect here work as well. And that should be easy enough. And back here, we just put this code. This one, of course. Put it here and say hover. And the same thing with active. And that should do the job. All right. Okay, great. So this looks already pretty formatted, right? Maybe one thing that we can do here to make this look even better is to add some space around this checkbox here because I think this looks a little, this lacks a little um, white space here and you actually can see this here with those labels. They look a little weird here. So I'm going to do that and another thing is that I want to get rid of these blue uh, borders that Google Chrome adds to this. So let's do these two things now. First uh, the checkbox 
and that's pretty easy just say input and then of course type equals checkbox and I want some margin on maybe all sides so we didn't do this for a long time so at the top I want let's say 10 pixels at the right side I want some 5 pixels so between the text box and the text at the bottom also 10 pixels and on the left side no margin at all and the last thing is to get rid of those borders when we focus on those elements and the best thing of doing that is to get rid of it for all elements so we have another zero class here which is called focus and we just say outline none and then it should go away so check this out all right no focus here anymore and we have some distance here between those elements which looks much better now so yeah now there's only the footer left to do and we'll do that right in the next lecture so see you there Welcome to the last section we need to build for our website, the footer. Every website has a footer and is like the conclusion of your website, where the user can find additional information about a website or a company. So this is the most simple footer ever, but simple is in many cases a good solution. And this footer has two navigations, one for less important links like about us or a link to a blog and one for social media on the right side. In a more complex website, a footer usually repeats the main navigation, but that's not necessary in our case. We don't need more than this. So in this last section, there are not many new things to learn, but we keep practicing. So we'll learn how to build a simple but effective footer and a cool way of using social icons on a web page. So, for the footer, HTML actually has another special element just for that. And as you can imagine, it's called exactly footer. So, first, as always, we need a new row here. So, a row. And now, as I told you before, we will have two navigations inside of this row. And so we have a column for each of those because we want them side by side. So I will create two columns here. So column and span one of two. And this is for one of the navigations and then for the second navigation, the social media navigation. So as before, we're going to use an unordered list in order to build that navigation. And I'm going to call this one footer nav. And so let's see what we need to include into this navigation. Because we actually have it right here. So the first link will be to about us and again it points uh, nowhere so about us and now just duplicate this and blog press iOS app and I need to duplicate it once again. So, Android app. All right. And now we need another navigation to include links to Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and Instagram, because those are the accounts OmniFood uses. So again, an unordered list. And this one will be called social links.
so. Now what we need here, we will obviously not write Facebook or Twitter. What we want here is an icon for that. So you already know where we get those and it's right here. As I showed you, we have some social icons down here. So here's the first for Facebook. So I class and it's easy as this. So I'm duplicating it three times and now one for Twitter. The next one is for Google Plus. And one last for Instagram. And here we go. So these are our navigations. And now we usually have a paragraph as well where we have, for instance, some fancy text about copyright or something like that. And so let's include another row here where we can put some text. And in here, as I said, I will put just a paragraph. And we can write something like copyright and then we use a nice symbol as well which is called copy. You have obviously seen this in many places. So it's the copyright symbol and 2015 by Omnifood. Of course this is not the case because Omnifood is not a real company but it's just to just to show you what this usually looks like. So Omnifood created this in 2015 and it's their website. All right. So we can now check what this looks like in the browser on our web page. And we see our new section down here. So this looks of course a little weird because it comes with the link styling we defined before. So the style of this is like this right now because it's the generic link styling that we defined before. So we have to change this and we have to format all of this and put these links side by side and we're going to do all of this in the next lecture. Welcome back to Building the Footer. Let's write some more CSS to format our footer. So here we are again. As I said before, we want to of course have these links side by side. And we want to get rid of these bullet points and we want to format the whole thing. And we also want a very dark background for this footer in order to make it kind of stand out. So let's go to our CSS. And the things we're going to do are actually quite easy to do. It's just to repeat some things we already did before. So to start, let's make a darker background color here. Of course not black, but we want it kind of deep. And I like to use this color, actually. Let's just check this. Okay, this makes a great contrast between this white and this gray. And now I will make the text like white or a very light gray. But first let's format those navigations. So we have footer nav and we want it to have no bullet points as always. 
and we want this one to float on the left side inside of its container and then we have the social icons and we also want no bullet points and this one we want to float all the way to the right side you know the list elements inside of these navigations of these unordered lists we want to have them side by side and so what one thing that we can do is to display them as inline blocks and this way they will not cause a line break so they will be side by side and we can also assign them some margin so what we can do here is footer nav li and we can actually do the same thing for the social icons because we want him to behave in the same way so we use our very much used property display and inline block and then we can set a nice margin to the right side of each of them in order to give them some spacing so margin right let's say 20 pixels okay, let's check this okay they are already side by side at least these ones there must be something wrong with this here so let me check what's happening here maybe it's not the right name oh all right it's social links here of course it's not social icons so social links and social links and now these are side by side as well now there's only one tiny problem left with these uh, li elements and let me show you what i'm talking about and for that i will use inspect elements so you will see again how useful this is so where do we have our footer okay it's right here and so with the blue highlighting you see the the row class and so you can see that here we have some space between the last icon and the end of the row right so the icon is not all the way to the right side of the row and that's because of the margin right we defined of 20 pixels so what we need to do is to get rid of that for the last li element so let's do that and as you know the connection between brackets and the browser was lost because we did that so let's go back here and now what we do is of course such as we did it before we use the last child pseudo class so last child and last child and then we say we want margin zero I mean, we can say margin right but it's actually the same thing so you see that now this is better and i will inspect it again actually so to prove you that this worked okay right this is better now so then let's now um, format this text here these links and you see we have to get rid of this text in the HTML it's down here still okay so these are links and so I hope that you can do this on your own by now so footer nav li and then the links inside of it and I will use the link state and then footer nav li a visited and we want this to happen as well for the social links so 
All right. So we want, of course, now text decoration. So now underlining. And we also want no border because if you remember, we defined that those links should have a border. We defined it all the way up here. So all the usual links have this border. So we just get rid of this. And as I said, I also want a nice text color for them because that orange really doesn't look great. So I will start with white and then use the color picker to go with something else. So we want something a little bit dark. Okay, this color looks good. I really like those colors where we only need those three digits. And up here it's of course visited and not visited or whatever that is. And I think now we should be good to check this. And all right, this looks a little dark, but it's on purpose because I will then with the hover effect make the color look lighter. Because we don't want to stand this out too much. And so this is good. And we will now add some hover effect to these links here. So let's do that. So footer, nav, li, i, and hover. And of course, active. So what we want to change is the color. Not to white, but something like that. Let's say this one. And we want, of course, to have a transition there for the color property with 0 0.2 seconds interval. Okay, great. Now, of course, we also need some padding here in this footer, right? And also, we want to format this text here, this paragraph. So let's do, do these two things and then we will worry about these icons here. So we want a padding for this footer. Not quite as big as we had with the other sections. So let's say 60 pixels for instance and we will then see if it looks great. And now let's just format the paragraph inside of the footer to have the same color as the links, which is 8888. And we can also center the text, the text align center. And we can maybe even uh, decrease the font size a little bit because it's not necessary that it's as big as the main text on the website. All right. All right. Yeah, probably 60 pixels was still a little too much. We will decrease this to uh, 50 pixels or 40 and also some distance between this paragraph and these navigations. So the best way of doing that is to add a margin to the top of the paragraph. So margin top, 30 pixels, let's say, and here we change that to 50. So of course this looks a little empty here right now because you could actually add some more text here or I don't know something else. In this case we will not worry about this because it's just a footer to show you what we can do and how all of this works. So now let's worry about these icons and what I want to do here is to of course make those a little bit bigger but in the hover effect we will do something cool which is in each of these icons we will change the color of the icon to 
the color of the corresponding social network. And I have a great site where we can see all these colors. So with the Facebook we will change to this color, the Twitter button we will change to this color, the Google Plus and the Instagram. So we have those colors here and then we will just have to copy them. So let's do that. Back in the CSS. Actually, put this right here. So, the so show links li, right? Link and so show links the visited state. Let's make them a little bit bigger font size, say 180%. And we will then target each of the specific icons. So we will use this, these classes here. So it's just Ion Social and then the name of each of the social networks. We will then, the best way of doing this is to actually put the hover effect right on each of these classes. So let's see which color value we're going to use. So this is for Facebook and that should work. So I'll just copy this. So Twitter, Google Plus, and Instagram. So this is for Twitter. For Google Plus. And then the last one is for Instagram. And let's check this out. Well, these are way too big, of course, but the color effect works, actually. And this is pretty great. Yeah, this looks really cool, right? So now what we have to do is to also add that transition that we want. And we're going to do that back here. So we have to do it this way. So Twitter, Google Plus and Instagram. And then we just say that we want a transition for the color of 0 0.2 seconds. Let's check this out. And here we go. Here we have our effect. So actually I think that the entire text here is a little too big. So I'll just reduce all the text because as I said, I don't want to, to make all of this stand out too much and these links are a little too big now. This doesn't look uh, natural, I think. So I will reduce the text for all elements in a footer element. And so I can say that I want font size to be 80% here for instance and then everything will get affected inside of this element. And let me just delete this from here. And maybe here we can change it to 170. And so let's see. These are still a little bit too big, but the rest looks good. Actually, the padding here or the margin here is too big as well. So let's change that 
and let's also make this icons a little bit smaller so maybe 20 pixels is enough here and then 160 and now we're almost at the end of this so yeah I think this was our last change because this looks great now so let's revisit our whole web page to see what we got here so this is very cool we designed all those sections and I think you can really be proud of yourself for what you achieved with this don't you think so so we built all of this with our own hands and I think it's this this is really powerful and this is really great stuff in the next lecture we will start to make this website be responsive because as you see now well when we do reduce this this starts looking a little bit weird right so that is what we're gonna be working on in the next lecture so you can take a break and revisit everything we've done here or you can come with me to the next lecture